Hi traders and welcome to the Technical Analysis Market Watch on Friday the 10th of May. So I've seen some good action again this week. It's been a fantastic couple of months and uh, resistance is certainly starting to be tested on a lot of the key indices and currency pairs. So we'll jump straight into the charts and see if we can identify any trades for today or early into next week. All right, we'll start out here with the Aussie USD and we can see that we've had a really, really big launch off what was effectively a, a 65.50 zone. You can see that we all got, all that got touched at that level. We've got a lot of support and resistance at this point. You can see here, I don't like doing a lot of lines um, yeah, on the chart really because it really sometimes confuses people, but you can see generally when you're looking to the left of the screen, you, you do see the points very, very clearly. Like you can see here, we've got about a week and a half of support right at this level at the 65.50. Um, and we've also got a, a lot of resistance here, another week's worth of resistance there and again there and again there. So a very, very good testing point for it to actually launch into a long opportunity and that it has done. And we've seen a big move today. Look, this is not uh, unusual. Of course, we saw a dollar weakness and the euro has also fallen. We'll look at those in a few minutes, but obviously a good launching pad and really you need to go to the smaller time frames to identify these opportunities. When you go to a 15 minute chart, you're going to see the higher, high, higher low sequences straight off the bat. Um, and you can see it launched very, very quickly from this zone. And once we got a break of this level, uh, it was off. We were talking about that consolidation period last, um, in the last couple of days actually, and it finally did break through. So when you see uh, these sorts of things happening, uh, especially at a time when the markets look like a lot of the uh, earnings news is out of the way now, like most of the earnings are done and dusted are the ones that count anyway. So really, we're probably going to start seeing uh, some trending action. Really, what we'd be looking forward uh, to seeing next week is a, a break above this level. I'm not really going to be excited about the Aussie USD long until this level is well and truly broken by daily candle. Yes, we've seen a good move up, uh, but really what we're wanting to probably identify is this swing here. Uh, that's generally going to be um, the extended move uh, in a lot of instances. So we're going to measure that area there and that will bring us right up to that sort of 6680 level. That's what I'd be looking for in the first instance because that level has to break before we get any serious moves up back into that 68 zone. So realistically, look for a daily close above that 6650. Uh, and if we get that, yeah, early in the week, especially, uh, we can look towards moves back up to that sort of 66.80 as a scalping opportunity, uh, and then on to the bigger move. Once we get a break from that zone, the bigger move uh, way up to the to the previous highs around this level, uh, and that 68.50 are going to be uh, the more than likely targets. If it fails here and fails to make it and close above here by the end of the week, and we look for weakness again, uh, more than likely the levels that we'd be looking for that sort of 65-50 area again. So still re range bound in a sense that, yeah, we're, we're stuck between a couple of very important zones, but it is testing very key resistance at the moment. So certainly one to keep an eye on. All right, move over to the US dollar CAD now. And look, it failed to make the previous high. Uh, we knew that last week. Um, it had a sell-off and it's failed to do it again. Uh, this time it's got a shooting star there, uh, which is very ominous for it. Uh, failed to make that high again, knowing that we're getting lower highs, even though the, the lows are relatively equal, um, we are getting lower highs. So the momentum seems to be shifting from the US dollar CAD. Uh, and realistically, the 20 moving average is there and it's been catching it so far. We can see these bottoms here uh, as a bit of a catch point for it. It's certainly been bolstering it so far but the fact that we're seeing these lower highs is certainly a concern for the overall picture um it really if the 3650 happens to break uh, with a daily candle yeah the damn walls may well break on this one and we may find ourselves back at 136 very quickly we know it's very very heavy support there Okay, so we can see resistance there and a lot of resistance right through here. So we would expect it's a lot of resistance there. So we would expect that this level would be our ultimate target for the short in the first instance. Um, but all we're looking for really is a break below that 136.50. If we get that on a daily, we can start targeting that 136 zone. Again, scalping because we are still in a, um, a sideways moving market, in my opinion, on this one. So we wouldn't be looking for any long-term moves. But if we do get a break of that level, that's a different story again, because then we're looking at a big move down to that 134.50. But a daily has to close well below that, and we expect pretty strong support at that level. So reasonable trading if you're shorting it, especially if um, you've been following the trend on the weakening highs. But uh, yeah, it's about to approach a very uh, strong area of support here. So we need to break that through before we get too excited. 
All right, US dollar yen um, did all the things it needed to do last week. Came back, tagged the 152 like we predicted it would. Uh, very, very heavy support zone there. And of course, it had bounced off there like a, a trampoline. You can see that it got to the 152. Um, and then all of a sudden, it's back at, you know, effectively, you know, nearly 300 points up uh, very, very quickly. It's still very volatile, uh, the yen, in terms of how it's moving. You can see the last few candles on it have been very, very volatile. Look, it's one of those ones now, if you didn't get this launch off, and you had to be pretty quick to get it to because it happened very, very fast, like you'd have to go down to a very small time frame. Probably a one hour is probably as low as I would have gone. But then yeah, when you see the, uh, the touch here, once it got the lightning bolt, several lightning bolts all the way up, all those 20 moving average touches are opportunities to get in. So although it didn't, it looked very, very hard and sharp, it was very, very easy to get in on the one hour time frame from the things we talk about every single week. So hopefully you're able to get hold of that. This is probably the level where I'd be starting to get concerned about it around that 155. I would, I'd be taking profit around that level if I was in from the lows, because that's probably the best place for it. Um, but if it does reverse here and fail to make a new high, and there's still the move is so big that um, you can get in on uh, potential opportunities, but just be a bit careful on this one. I think the easy move has happened. Um, and yeah, definitely this was an area that I would have been looking at taking profit. Uh, hopefully you did. Uh, if it rolls over and starts to look weak um, anywhere in this zone from here, the trending moving average would be my next target on this one. Okay, so pretty straightforward there. All right, we'll move on over to the dollar index now. And uh, you can see, obviously, the sustained weakness has sort of been kicking in. Now we can see we've got the series of lower highs and lower lows. The 20 moving average has pulled it up, uh, which is obviously weakening the euro. We had a little bit of strength um, earlier in the week, as you can see. But um, yeah, that softening jobs data, obviously, everyone's sort of thinking about interest rate cuts again. Never really a great way to drive a market, in, in my opinion, but it is what it is, and that's what people are looking for. So... Um, yeah, we can see the weakness there. But of course, the euro is the one we want to be trading in this instance. But it's looking like the 20 moving average is really holding it at bay at this moment. The euro is uh, looking pretty strong. Like I say, you can see that we've got the pullback down to uh, a good lightning bolt level. It broke through the 50 moving average and then pulled back. But now it found support on the 20 like we would expect it would at around that 107.30 area. You can see there a really, really good launch pad for it. I wouldn't be getting excited about this until it's above 108. Uh, with a daily. If we get a close above 108 on the daily, then we can start targeting 50 points from there up to the next resistance point. Still slightly scalpy for mine. I wouldn't be looking for long-term uh, trades on this one yet. But again, similar to the, um, the Aussies that we were talking about earlier, it, that range of that move is probably going to be replicated and that replication would get to about that 108.50 area. So a daily close above the 108 and I'd be starting to look for moves up to the 108.50. If it fails to make that high at above just above 108 and rolls over the obvious target is going to be the 107 okay so pretty straightforward trading on the euro um and is being very technical at the moment so yeah looking good for uh these moves that we're uh, looking and setting for basically the 107 or the 10850 depending on where momentum swings certainly early in the week is what we're looking for for these closes and the S&P 500 uh, trying to close above the resistance is pretty reasonable resistance there at one uh, all 5180. Uh, a fit, basically a 5200 close on Monday. Uh, not so much uh, today's close, but probably the Monday close is what I'd be looking for. If we're trading on Monday morning above 5200, uh, I'd be looking at moves up, scalping moves up to about that 50 to 60 points higher than that to the previous high. That's what I'd be um, sort of targeting. I'm not you know, big on breaking to a new high on the first trade, so I'd let that play out. Uh, that would be the ideal trade. So if we're trading here on Monday, uh, look for um, momentum swings up to the previous high. If it fails and closes below one, uh, the 5180 on Monday and we're trading below it, the 20 moving average would be my target back around that sort of 5120. So there's still a little bit to play out on the S&P 500, but... It is a very, very critical zone in terms of what it's going to do next week now. So really the, the one, the 5180 to 5200 is the key zone above 5200. And we're looking for moves up to that 5280 in the first instance. But if we're closing below the 5180 at the end of the week, I'd be starting to target the 5100 again, down around that 20 moving average and that next support level. So pretty good trading on the S&P 500. So I hope you had a great week's trading. We've seen some really, really good moves on you know, a lot of the things that we check out every week. Week. So we're certainly getting the moves and volatility in the markets, but I think now we're probably going to get a steadying effect now that a lot of the noise is out of the way. So have a great weekend and I look forward to seeing you all next week.